Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Naya Glass of the Guild Pact deck. Glass of the Guild Pact, a 2 mana artifact, giving multicolored creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so a nice cheap anthem effect. And then we also have the full playset of Hero of Precinct 1 as a 2 mana 2 2 human warrior, saying whenever we cast a multicolored spell, we get to make a 1 1 white human creature token. So these are the two payoffs for playing all these multicolored cards. And then, as you'll notice, we also have Lurus of the Dream Den as our companion, meaning each permanent card in our starting deck has converted mana cost 2 or less. And then we also get access to a 3-2 lifelinking Lurus, which is also multicolored for Hero and Glass of the Guild Pact. And during each of our turns, we can cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost 2 or less from our graveyard. So great in combination with all these cheap creatures that we can keep getting back. So even though Lurus costs 3 mana to get into our hand from our sideboard, so it is pretty slow, it still gives the deck a little bit of extra late game against the more controlling decks in the format, but otherwise our deck is fully capable of winning without it. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full place of the Footlight Fiend as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one Devil, dealing 1 damage to any target when it dies, and of course hybrid mana means it's also multicolored for Hero and for Glass of the Guild Pact. And we've got three copies of Arista Redeemed as a legendary elf warrior that can start generating green and white elf warrior creature tokens. So those also count as multicolored for Glass of the Guild Pact. And especially once we get to six mana, we can start doing some very powerful things, doubling all the tokens we have in play. Very synergistic with our Hero Precinct 1 that can already make a ton of tokens by itself. And then at 2-man, of course, we've got Hero, we've got the full playset of Burning Tree Emissary, which is also a great card here. When it enters the battlefield, adds a red and green to our mana pool. We can even cast two 1-drops with red and green mana, using the red mana for Fiend and the green mana for Rizzo Redeemed. So it can allow for some very explosive turns, especially if we have multiple Burning Tree Emissaries. And we can even use a two floating mana to play Glass of the Guild Pact, immediately pumping our Burning Tree Emissary. So this is probably one of the best cards in the deck. We've got uh, two copies of Galia of the Endless Dance as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two haste creature that can also draw extra cards if we uh, attack with three or more creatures. And then we've got four copies of Zurta Goblin, a 2-2 two -two creature with a riot, so either enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it or with haste. And then we've got the full playset of Swiftblade Vindicator, which is also surprisingly effective in this deck as a 2 mana 1-1 one -one double strike, vigilance and trample, so definitely benefits from all the anthem effects like Glass of the Guild Pact. And then we've got two copies of Domri's Ambush as our removal spell of choice. Put a plus one plus one counter on a creature and then deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. Very good to put on a Swiftblade Vindicator as well. Then we also haven't mentioned Find as One yet as a one mana pump spell, targeting a human and a non-human we control, giving them plus one plus one and indestructible. And we've got a nice mix of humans and non-humans in this deck. Footlight Fiend, Riss, Zurta Goblin and Galia as non-humans, and then Hero can even make more humans, we've got Burning Tree as a human and Vindicator as a human, and then uh, Lurus is also a nice creature to protect with Finders 1, so if we can wait until we can play Lurus and have Finders 1 to protect it, we can get even more value from Lurus. So even though it's not a multicolored spell, it still fits quite nicely into the deck. Another pump spell we could consider is Collision Colossus, which is especially effective with our Swiftblade Vindicator, giving it for additional power with a double strike can lead to a lot of damage. So that's definitely another card you could consider. And then last but not least, we've got the full playset of Heroic Reinforcements as a way to generate two 1-1 one -one soldier creature tokens, and until end of turn, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 and gain haste. Important to note, if we have a Hero of Precinct 1, we'll get to generate that 1-1 one -one token before the Heroic Reinforcements resolves, and this says all creatures we control gain haste, including the token we get from Hero of Precinct 1, so we can attack with it right away. And uh, especially once we empty our hand of all these Burning Tree Emissaries, and all the tokens we can make with Hero of Precinct 1. Heroic Reinforcements can be an excellent way to close out a game. And then the mana base, we've got two basic mountains alongside all of the shock lands here with Sacred Foundry, Temple Garden, and Stomping Ground. And then we've got a couple check lands too with Sun Petal Grove, Clifftop Retreat, and Rootbound Crag. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. We're on the play, facing a Yurion Sky Nomad deck. Uh, yeah, the sand seems fine. Two one drops plus glass is pretty good. Might still play Hero Precinct 1 on turn 2 though. And then which one drop makes more sense to start with? Probably Footlight Fiend. 
Keep Rist to then combo with Hero if it does get to the late game somehow. Yorion could mean Field of the Dead, so it could be any number of three color control decks. So the Sultai Triome. Next turn Glass plus Riss. And hope to draw some more action. Grazer. Annoying blocker here. Blast Zone 1 could be pretty effective. Gonna be an Elvish Rejuvenator. So definitely pointing towards Field of the Dead. Lots of differently named lands as well. This would be a good time to draw some action. Another glass isn't bad. But now the Blast Zone, destroying Riss and Fiends, is very attractive for the opponents. Does also get rid of her Boreal Grazer and sets them back on land, so maybe they're not interested in losing a land. Could see Golos getting fields. Shatter the Sky instead. Well, now we get to leverage Lurs. And a 3-3 Vindicator hits pretty hard. Now Blast Zone is pretty effective on 2 here as well, so we could see them put a counter on it and then destroy it. I want to get uh, Riss back in place since we've got 5 lands already, so we could maybe start making some tokens. At long last, Golos shows up, makes a zombie. Makes two zombies. And they search for Ascanta. Opponents on empty. Burning tree is not bad. Like on the one hand I want to get hero and play first, but I wouldn't be able to go Lurus, Hero and Burning Tree in the same turn without uh, losing out on the 1-1 token. But I guess just putting more stuff in play is fine. So let's start by attacking. And opponent is missing red mana for the Golos activation. Although next turn they're probably just gonna play Yorion and flicker Golos, so I do want to take it out here. And then go Burning Tree into Lurus. And then I can replay the Vindicator once again. So let's see if they go for the Yorion play. Crisis for 6 instead, not bad. And a land to make another zombie. Hasty Zurta, so... Alright, put and packs it in. Didn't think they were dead necessarily, but this turn I was going to be able to play Hero, play Zurta, make some tokens. And then Rizzo Redeemed was looking quite good once uh, we got to 6 mana, so yeah, 
getting to see the recursion power of lures in the late game is pretty nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an Omori deck. Our hands, not great. Um, missing red mana mainly for Galia and Footlight Fiends. We do get to go Riss into Glass, although Glass is not a card we want to play on turn 2 very often, unless it's post Burning Tree Emissary. Yeah, it's Mulligan. This is better. I want to keep the heroes. Reinforcement synergizes nicely with hero. Don't think I'll need Finders 1 against the Nomori all-creature deck. So we'll bottom that. And just generating a bunch of tokens with hero might make it difficult for the opponent to kill us. But we'll see. Maybe our opponent's on an all-enchantment deck instead. And yeah, there we see Gift of Paradise. So it could be a Honden type situation. I'm just gonna play another hero before we cast any multicolored spells. Honden of Knight's Reach, that's fine. So I could get in for a ton of damage here if we heroic reinforcements. I think I'm okay with that. Even though I could play Vindicator first, there's nothing to Domri's ambush here. Opponent down to seven, discard lands. Although maybe Domri's ambush could be discarded instead. London of Infinite Rage, but our opponent seems pretty dead here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not particularly exciting. We don't have any of our payoffs, which I consider to be Glass, Burning Tree, or Hero Precinct 1. And being on the draw means this hand could just be a little bit too fair. Eh, this is a bit better. And then get rid of Reinforcements or fight as one. Probably Reinforcements. Burning Tree lets me play Fiend and Riss in the same turn. Although I guess I want to play one of them right now. I think I'll play Footlight Fiend for starters. And Bray Maggot's gonna have a look. Takes a burning tree. Alright, probably play Vindicator first then. I'm okay trading. So not sure yet what we're up against. Knight of Evan Legion. So maybe some sort of mono black Phyrexian Obliterator deck playing fight spells. Well, I can attack thanks to fight as one, and then probably they take three, and I get to play a three three Zorta second main. Knight attacks. I'll take it. A land would be nice. Murder Strider takes out Vindicator. Vindicator. 
slight improvement to our hand, I guess. Now, if Obliterator shows up, we could be in trouble. Instead, it's just gonna be Murder Strider. And a Prey Upon, yep. So that confirms our suspicion of uh, Obliterator being in the opponent's deck. So Zurta can attack, and then we get to go Burning Tree into Vindicator plus Riss. Can still get back our Lurus at some point. Ray Mega takes my finest one. So if we draw heroic reinforcements, we'll be one mana short of casting it. So I can either put lures in my hand or start making tokens with Rist Redeemed. Contempt exiles Rist. Okay. I wouldn't mind getting rid of uh, Murder Strider here. Potentially enables my other creatures to attack. Wouldn't be able to get immediate value from Lurus unless we draw land. Although this attack is pretty nice since I can chump the knight, take out Bray Maggot, and then uh, play Lurus and get back Fiend right away. Um, probably the one with Burning Tree. I could also get one with Fighters 1, play Lurus, but I don't have triple white so I wouldn't be able to keep up Fighters 1. So this should work out. Could also get back Gallia, although I don't have anything to discard so we wouldn't be drawing. But that might still be okay. If I send in everyone. Yeah, let's go with Galia. on top decks another Bray Maggot and scoops it up. Lurus just gonna provide too much card advantage. Sweet, on to the next one. We're on the play. Um, not a great hand. Can probably do better. This is a bit better. Definitely need to keep Vindicator. Glass synergizes nicely with Vindicator, so does Ambush. So maybe it's reinforcements, which I'm furthest from casting. Although, if I don't draw more threats, I might be a bit threat light. In which case, maybe Ambush wants to go. Let's try this. And then I can go turn 3 Glass, turn 4 maybe Hasty Zurta. Alright, even better. Now I think I like Burning Tree. Hmm, let's see, we are facing a Mind Stone Red deck. So could see Storm's Wrath, in which case I don't want to overextend. So I think Burning Tree into Glass makes sense. Otherwise, going Burning Tree into Zurta with Haste could also be okay. But then we are playing into a potential Sweeper here. And if we draw land for reinforcements, great. If we don't, then we get to 
play Orsurtai instead. Alright, it's a reanimator deck, discarding Ulamog. And Cathartic Reunion discarding two lands. I think we've got Xaxes if we draw land here. And we did, so let's find out. So Vindicator hits for six by itself. Yeah, that should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. We're on the draw with a four land hand. It's a bit much. This is better. And then I could get rid of one land. And then have the play of turn 2 hero, turn 3 burning tree plus Zurta. Turn 1 inquisitive puppet, so this is the tempered steel deck. Can be a tough matchup, stone cold serpent, protection from multicolor. Can uh, definitely be a, a very annoying card to deal with. The good news is that they probably don't have much removal for hero, maybe a glass casket. Turn to Steel Overseer, also bad news. So we're pretty far behind, although a double Burning Tree Emissary could maybe catch us back up. And there's a Tempered Steel. Probably see Overseer be activated. Take six. So double burning tree into Zurta Goblin and next turn play glass. So I can hold off any big ground creatures with all these tokens. It's the flying ornithopter. That could be an issue, especially if they find an all that glitters or another temper steel. They do have the option of sacking the puppets to make a token. Seems unlikely. Alright. Yep, there's a glitters. So that's gonna hit me for 10 in the air. They did not pump with Overseer to keep it back as a blocker. Alright, so I can shock in Sacred Foundry, play Galia, play Glass. Is that enough? Probably not. But I don't have any removal for Ornithopter here. Ambush is not enough. So it's the only thing I can do. Don't have any flyers I can draw. So we'll go out in a blaze of glory. GG's. Unbreakable formation to give Steel Overseer vigilance so they can attack and activate it. Very nice. Alright, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. Fine hands. Sometimes it can be worth it to save a risk in hand until after we play hero. This might be one of those cases, because I don't have a great turn 3 besides just a 2-drop and then I can play Riss alongside it. Also saves me a bit of damage. Treasure hunts, alright. Well, this is a pure race. So finding glass or heroic reinforcements would be nice. Definitely not a game where we're gonna play lures. And there's reinforcements, perfect. And we'll save the hasty Zurta for later. Treasure Hunt finds Thassa's Oracle, so they won't have the turn 4 kill. But we do have the turn 4 kill. Sweet. On to the next one. We're on the play. Missing a red mana for Footlight Fiends. Hmm, so if I find red mana this hand's okay. I might want to keep Fiend in hand anyway until after I play Hero. Not too much to pump with glass at the moment. So it's not a great hand, but I'll try it. Turn 1 Elves, always scary. Drawing a second Footlight Fiend that we can cast. So we're pretty far behind. This is Gruul. Domri's Ambush kills Hero. Alright, there's Red Man at last. Still gonna be an uphill battle. Ribjar Raptor. Not the easiest card to get past. Kind of liking Burning Tree and then get back Lurus with the floating mana. And then hope to draw land so I can play Lurus and keep up Fidus 1 to protect it. Brontodon can blow up my glass. Stomp. Takes out Fiend and I can't even kill the Lenor Elves here because of the plus one plus one counter, so... Yeah, opponent has had us beat at every turn. Alright, that was a good draw. Now, I wouldn't be able to get back Fiend if I want to keep up Fight as one, but I think it's important that I do. And then next turn I can play a hero, play Footlight Fiends and still have Fight as one up. So they don't really have any great attacks. I guess they want to draw a card.
probably start with Hero, and then I can play two one drops to trigger it. And then reinforcements next turn could be pretty bag breaking. Register Alpha. Take three. How much damage is this reinforcement? So they get one good block with the Regisaur. Let's say on my hero. I'm still getting in a ton of damage. Probably enough to make it worth it here. Get in with all. They can trade for Lurus or they can eat my hero. Trades for Lurus. So if they chump with both elves, they're still taking 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so I guess they're just dead. Yeah, don't even know if they had a way of surviving that turn. Well, another game showcasing the strength of Lurus and also showcasing the reason why we're playing Fight as One as a cheap 1 mana pump spell to save Lurus from removal and great synergy with all the humans and non-humans in the deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and this hand's potentially quite exciting. Turn one elf. Alright, so let's have some fun. And then next turn I can glass, or I can Zorta first. Branchwalker finds land. So if I glass, then this gets to attack without trading, which seems better. And then we can play a hasty 3-3 Zorta next turn. So Golgari Explore deck. Luckily no Wild Growth Walkers that we have to worry about. Alright, let's uh, get in there. Could also get back Lurus this turn instead of uh, playing Zerta, but probably still play Zerta. And then Haste seems fine. The chum block there could indicate a Ritual of Soot incoming. Slimefoot is still away. Interesting. Let's get in for seven. Then next turn we can get some lures value getting back burning tree all right i see so it's a sapperling synergy deck so play a lures and then i can play a whole bunch of burning trees Alright, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hands. Could uh, benefit from Glass of the Guild Pacts. Don't really get to use the extra mana from Burning Tree on anything just yet. So I'll just go for Vindicator and then I can go Burning Tree into maybe get back Lurus next turn. Turn one Mountain Kiln Fiends, alright. And Hero of Precinct 1. 
So how about we play hero and keep up fighters one instead of uh, doing anything else? Sure, can attack first. Happy to use fighters one if they block uh, Riss. Opponent takes it. So I need to shock myself. Second kill fiends, setting up for a big turn. Alright, get to go hero into another burning tree, although I don't have a use for the extra mana afterwards. Still seems worthwhile. Should probably attack first. Although I guess I'm not attacking with Rizzo Redeemed. If we get two more lands, we can start doubling tokens. If we draw heroic reinforcements, we probably win the game. Alright, Potence on an Arclight Phoenix build with uh, Steamkin, so next turn could be pretty bad for me. Just gonna try and get in as much damage as I can. Is it worth it to send in the tokens? Let's see, four, six, seven, eight. Don't think so. And then I can either make a token with Riss or get back Lurus, but there's nothing in the graveyard currently. Probably make a token. Thrill discards Kiln Fiends. If they have a way of giving Kiln Fiend Trample, that could potentially kill me with all the extra mana from Steamkin. Yep, there it is. So if they have some more card draw in hand, I could definitely be dead. Tormenting voice. Alright, I guess that limits the amount of spells they can cast. Does get back Phoenix. But I'm not taking a lethal. I can make a token and attack with everyone next turn. I guess this forces me to block. And then I can just attack back with everyone. So I'm taking 15 down to 1. Sure. And even drew the land to activate a wrist, but not going to be necessary. Alright, close game. That early fighters one to take out Kiln Fiend potentially saved us a lot of damage. On to the next one. We're on the play, facing a Sky Nomad deck. This hand's missing green, and Ambush is probably not great in the matchup. This is better. So what do we keep? Probably get rid of a land, actually. Shouldn't matter too much which one. I guess white is better with Lurus. And then this is a type of hand where I probably want to play Riss on turn one. Since we don't have hero to hold it. And then I think I go turn to Vindicator, turn three Burning Tree into Glass. And then really hope there's no Shadow of the Sky. Uh, 
All right, I think I'm all in. No shadow, please. It's a ferry, that's fine. So I can put them to two here. All right, never mind. Opponent concedes. Could have played another glass and hit my opponent for eleven. Put him to two. It's probably better than uh, overextending into another sweeper. All right, that was a fast one. Burning three emissary. Definitely a very strong card when we can combine it with cards like Glass of the Guild Pact. On the draw. Missing green mana, but we can use Burning Tree to filter for green, so this seems fine. And double hero to synergize with reinforcements. Now the question is, do we play both heroes before playing the multicolored spells? Footlight Fiend is also interesting here. I could hold it, especially if we draw lands. If we don't draw lands for a couple turns, then I'm probably better off playing it now. Facing Castle Ventress could be a lot of different decks. Grixis and a Thought Erasure could take away Burning Tree here to slow us down. And that also gets rid of my green mana fixing. Alright, hopefully Hero Precinct 1 gets to stay in play for a couple turns, although Grixis control could mean all sorts of sweeper effects. So finding a glass here could help us add to the board without overextending. Another Thought Racer. Takes the second hero. Probably just gotta play Galia Smash. I also get to discard the card and draw two. Hopefully we don't discard reinforcements. All right. Yeah, let's just hope they don't have a sweeper here. And then the reinforcements could be lethal. All right, third thought erasure takes reinforcements. Puts Improbable Alliance in the graveyard. I guess uh, it's a combo with Opts. And Heartless Act kills Hero. I guess I can guarantee that Ambush is a card I discard. Taking two probably doesn't matter. And then we get back Lurus after we discard here. Yeah, this is probably better than playing Vindicator, or is it... Yeah, if I play Vindicator and have a board wipe, it's gonna be a while before I can get Lurus getting stuff back from the graveyard. And if they don't have a board wipe, I assume we're gonna be able to finish them off with what we have in play. Opponent did find Cry, goes to 4 to cast it, and leaves them with an Augur Bolas, which is not a bad blocker here. Alright, so can play Lurus and then play Hero out of the graveyard. If I play Burning Tree, I can't do anything else this turn. So I think I like Lurus into Hero. And then next turn I could Hero into Burning Tree into Vindicator even, so we get to go very wide.
glass, also a nice pickup. The way we lose is probably through another sweeper. Best way to kind of protect against it is to keep Hero and Vindicator in hand. So this turn could go Burning Tree into Glass, and that should be enough board presence. And Burning Tree survives Cry as opposed to Hero Precinct 1. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet. It's another game where we got to see the recursion from Lurus in action. Alright, so we got to see some games where we killed our opponent on turn 4 with Heroic Reinforcements. And we got to see some games where Lurus was able to provide card advantage in late game to still give us a shot at winning. So it is an aggro deck, but it's an aggro deck that still has a reasonable late game plan, and uh, Riz Redeemed also helps with that. Didn't really get to see Riz doubling any tokens, but that's another plan that's available. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.